Welcome to Module 1. Now, what you'll want to do is make sure that you grab a copy of the checklist. It's one of the first items in the module, and you can print it if you hit the little dot 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 in the upper right hand corner. Make sure your uh, window is expanded fully enough so you can see the little dot dot dot. It's a, a few little um, features up in the upper, hand, upper right hand corner of that checklist. And you can print it, and if you need to do that, do that. If not, if you can just look at it occasionally, that'll work too. But this presentation, and I don't normally do this for most modules, I won't do this again, but this is sort of a visual breakdown of that checklist. And uh, you know, it had a, a, a multi-year long dream of creating some kind of graphic on a PowerPoint and throwing my video into it. So the best I could come up with was a little truck, so that's why my, my frame is inside of a truck, because we're on a journey, right? It's a little cheesy, I know, but it was the best I could come up with. We don't have a lot of time. Um, all right, so module checklist. I want to make a few comments about it. You want to try to always refer to it. Um, maybe try to print it if that helps you. You can write your notes in the margin. You know, of course, scratch things out as you've completed them. Um, and just keep track of yourself. And you have to do that more uh, in the online class because you you have to monitor yourself a little bit more, I think, than uh, in a face-to-face -face where you always come together and then questions are asked um, in that face-to-face -face setting. And sometimes, you know, I think there's more there's more supports in that face-to-face. -face, that, that's part of what that face-to-face -face meeting does. It gives those supports. Well, you can you have those supports in the online environment. It just works differently. And make sure that you're aware that a, a tool like a checklist is a great thing to help you stay on track. Um, all right, so another tip is to protect yourself from information overload. That checklist has a lot of information on it, and so what I recommend is that when you get a checklist for a module, that you kind of skim read it, you know, read it in as much depth as you need to, but sort of read it, get an idea just in general, what are we doing over this two-week module, for example, and then maybe in the margin write out, what am I going to do Monday through Wednesday of the first week, and then what am I going to do Thursday through Sunday of the first week, or break it down however you think you should, just kind of quickly plan out how you're going to do it, and break it up into pieces. Um, then if you remember, maybe you're aware, when you're actually inside of a module in, in Course Den, there's little plus and minus signs um, that let you open or close those parts of the module. And what I recommend is that once you've figured out what you want to work on, at what point, using that checklist, then shut all the stuff that you don't need to work on yet, if that helps. For me, sometimes when there's 15 items, 15 little links or lines, things to look at in the left, I kind of panic and freeze. But if you just shut them and get them out of the way and know that they're going to be there for you when you're ready for them, I think that that can help minimize that sense of information overload and that sense that you have to tackle it all at once, which not everybody has that problem, but I'm, a, I'm that kind of learner that can get very overwhelmed if I don't figure out how to sort of narrow in and break it down. So just a tip from this kind of learner. Um, all right, moving on. Face-to-face -face sessions. Uh, there's a sign-up sheet where you can let me know if you think you're going to be coming to a face-to-face -face session. You don't have to put your, you don't even have to put your real name, quite honestly. You, but I recommend that you put at least your first name and your last initial, or put your pseudonym. In this class, you can have a pseudonym for all of your online stuff. So nobody has to know your real name on this wiki because the wiki can be seen from the outside world. Um, so, but if you're going to, if you think you're going to come, go ahead and put your name down. I'm going to come regardless of uh, whether or not you show up, probably. As long as there's at least two names on each face-to-face -face session, then I will be there. Um, the purpose of that session will be to teach you how to podcast using the program called Audacity. Mac users can also use Audacity. It's a free and open source audio software, which I love. I use it every week. And actually, my daughter Willow, she's nine, um, she learned how to use it this weekend. Um, she was trying to compose music, and she got very frustrated, and last night she swore she would just never try this again. But she worked on it for about seven or eight hours, from Saturday night through Sunday evening, until she had a meltdown last night. But it's really easy to use. Um, so it's it's cool. You can do all kinds of things. You can read audiobooks into it. You can create messages. You can record 
children talking about stuff or singing. You could download a karaoke, a blank karaoke track from Amazon.com, throw it into Audacity, and then sing over it. I mean, you can do all kinds of stuff. And I use it, again, every week, just in my online teaching and learning and in the classes I take. It's very useful. But you're going to use it for podcasting in this class. You're going to do some research, looking at technology tools in your area, and then you're going to present what you found through the podcast format. And you're going to do that in about three weeks, I guess. Let's see. It's due in four weeks. So you've got some time. And so the purpose of the session, of course, is to just teach you how to use that tool. Now, you can use Audacity on a PC or Mac. It's a free, open source, easily downloadable, installable program. Um, Mac users are welcome to use it. Mac users can also use GarageBand. That'd be fine as well. But it, I think it still helps, even if you think you're going to use GarageBand, it still helps to come and learn about Audacity because the process is very similar. It also helps later, if you've never made a movie, we have a digital movie coming up later in the semester. If you learn how to use Audacity, you become fairly proficient with it and comfortable with the concepts of creating a project and then exporting as a different file type. The same concept is used in movie making. And so I feel like the Audacity program is just sort of a scaffolding or it's a step that helps you uh, before you arrive at that movie making step. Um, all right, if you can't make it to a face to face session, I do want to say you have everything that you need to do it online. Everything's provided in what I call the podcast workshop, it's a wiki that I've created. Um, also, I have archives of um, online sessions that I've done where I show everything that I show in that face-to-face -face session those are also in that podcast workshop wiki on the front page if you can't make a session you can download one of those archives and you can view and pause and see what it is that we cover in that session um, if you have any doubts about your technological abilities I recommend that you come to a face-to-face -face session if you can um, and if you could complete all of the page the the steps on the front page of the the uh, podcast workshop wiki before you come in that would be good so go to that sign up page and you'll see a link to that podcast workshop wiki alright wiki foundation what is this this is an assignment we're doing in this module and uh, what it is is you you create a wiki and you set it up exactly like my example and it creates the you create the um, outline or template for your final portfolio. So if you look into module six, you'll see that you have something called a final portfolio due. That is this same wiki. You're going to submit this thing again, but it's going to have more information in it. It's going to have all of your projects you've done and some brief reflections on them. And another thing that I'll talk about in just a minute. So what you're going to do is create a new blank wiki. You're going to copy, mimic, or imitate my wiki, and you're going to just copy it onto your blank wiki. That always confuses people a little bit. Do I really make mine look exactly like yours? Can I really copy and paste? And yes, you can. Um, you're going to do a few extra things on the introduction page. So you're going to copy my stuff onto your intro page, then you're going to fill out a few sections before you turn in this assignment. And I do need to let you know that the most up-to-date, like what I want your wiki to look like is my example at wikifoundation.wikispaces.com. Sometimes, sometimes I um, I show you things on the video, and the video might have been made two semesters ago, and there might be something slightly different. And in fact, there is something different in fall. I've added, I've changed the way we do the progress video journals. So when you watch the video and it shows you how to set up the progress video journal journals, um, make sure that you look at my example at wikifoundation.wikispaces.com. Um, and let me tell you exactly, and, and it's okay if you forget and get confused about this, but I'm looking at the Wiki Foundation assignment, and it's at step four of that assignment that you create the Wiki Navigation, and you're going to watch a video tutorial called Creating the Wiki Navigation Bar, okay? Actually, you're going to do that, Then that's all fine. That's the same, just do what the video shows you. Step five, you're going to set up the wiki pages exactly like mine. And for setting up most pages, watch the video tutorial wiki page setup. That's on step five of this wiki foundation assignment. Now, one thing that's going to be a little bit different this semester is 
instead of setting up the progress video journal page the way I show in that video you're gonna set it up in a new way and that's why I added this line on the instructions for setting up the progress video journal page watch the new way to set up the progress video journal page and it says fall 2012 plus so from this semester forward here's the way and you do want to watch the video probably because it's a little bit it's a little bit detailed you're actually going to take a voice thread presentation that I created and embed it into your wiki page and that's all you have to do but you know it may not be obvious how you do that so make sure you check that out um, let's see what else do we want to say about the wiki foundation assignment so again the wiki foundation example wiki from which you copy and paste that thing is up to date okay the videos are mostly up to date but there may be a few things that uh, maybe don't look exactly like the example always defer to the example wiki that you're copying and pasting from because that thing is always up to date sorry I have to repeat so much but this question will come up and I just I'm trying to clarify it as much as I can alright so carefully choose your wiki domain and your level of privacy so if you use the University of West Georgia wiki system you can set your wiki to private that means nobody can see it except for me excuse me I have a little cold um, you can set it to protected which means the whole world can see it but only you can edit it or you can set it to public um, which means everybody can see it and everybody can edit it so I recommend at least protected and if you have any doubts about whether you want the world to see it I would make it private and then I can come in you'll have to add me as a member of your wiki and uh, my name is K Hewitt K H U E T T whether or not it's on the university wiki system or the outside wikispaces.com system and that's something that you'll cover in the instructions you're like oh my gosh she's already lost me well that's because I'm sort of, sort of glossing over it right now in the instructions it'll go over how you choose your domain I recommend just using the university system but you can use the outside system as well there's advantages to that because when you graduate it's still yours whereas I don't really know what happens to your wikis in the university system once you've graduated I'm not sure you can access them but you can always archive any of them so before you leave West Georgia you could go into the wiki settings and archive the thing as a PDF or even archive it as HTML and you would still have all the pages electronically you could post them online again in some other way I've done that before I've archived a wiki and then I post it online as a website so you can do that even for the West Georgia stuff all right on that topic of um, it, adding me to your wiki what's gonna happen probably I think I give you instructions on how to add me to your wiki on the instructions page but if you have any doubt don't worry about it just make it private and turn it in like I've asked you to and what will happen is when I go to grade it and I, I hit a wall and I can't join it I, I should be able to request membership to your wiki I'll request it some way um, I'll, I'll make it won't be I don't consider it your fault if I can't get in I'll let you know if I can't get in and I need you need to get in so don't worry too much about that but if you can figure out how to go into manage wiki and invite people um, and add me K Hewitt then I'll be in and I can see it anytime I try to log in there's a page on your wiki page so what you want to do in this module probably is do your wiki foundation first because then everything else that follows will make more sense there's a page on your wiki um, called my tech integration and what this is is a page on which you can sort of track some essential some, some basic ideas about technology integration and keep track of them asking such questions as what forces pressure schools and teachers to integrate technology what are the pros and cons of technology integration what are essential conditions I can influence um, what are some technology integration strategies I can use and what are some tools that I could use in support of those um, now this page may make no sense to you at the beginning of the semester and I don't expect it to but by the end of the semester you will have, you will have filled out parts of this page and it looks more intimidating than it actually is like on all of those long tables that comprise most of that page you're only gonna find information for three rows okay so it's not that hard it it's it's me this is this is the way I am I put a lot of information out there that looks scary but um, really it's just a it's just a simple way for you to keep track of some of the things that you've learned because it's easy to 
do something in Module 1 and come up with some interesting insights or, or realizations about something, well, this is a place where you can keep track of some of that, that kind of thing so that you don't lose it. Um, so as you go work through the semester, you want to revisit this page and add to it, okay? And in the first module, there's some good readings that, that will give you some ideas for things that you might note on that page. In this module, there's a chapter that I want you to read. It's like five or six pages long. It's a fabulous, simple overview of the push to have high-tech classrooms, written by David and Cuban back in 2010. It was published, and um, you want to download the chapter as a PDF, and you'll learn about this origin of the idea of a high-tech classroom, what problems are the technolo is technology intended to solve, um, and some comments about the efficacy of the use of technology. After you've completed the reading, you want to visit the reading page, readings page of your wiki. Now you've set that up. You've set, that, set up this page in your wiki foundation assignment. So you're going to visit that readings page. You're going to answer questions related to the chapter. If you have not set up your wiki foundation yet, then you're going to be completely baffled by what this means. So this is an example of where you probably want to go a little bit in order, or it won't make sense. You'll be like, what, what readings page? What questions? I have no idea what you're talking about. Um, you do not have to answer questions for the remaining readings. Those are coming up in the next two modules. And then at the end of all of the readings, there's three chapters total that you answer questions for on the wiki. You'll turn that in uh, at, the very, at, the, at the end of that third reading, that UBD, Understanding by Design reading. That's when you'll turn that in. In this module, we're also going to have a discussion. I recommend you complete it after the David and Cuban reading. So again, in order is probably beneficial because the David and Cuban will give you big picture. It'll help you kind of see some of the issues. And then this article is about a high-tech school. So, um, you know, I want you to read the article. It's about, I think it's about three pages long, like news, online newspaper pages. I mean, it's not, it's not the shortest article, but it's pretty quick. It's a good read. It's easy to read. Um, about a, I think it's in North Carolina. And you want to try to make that initial post by the first Thursday of the module and do two follow-up responses to peers by the last Sunday night of this two-week module. You want to try to get your webcam. Again, if you don't uh, want to get a webcam, you can use a webcam in the Teaching Materials Center slash Tech Hub here in the Education Center downstairs. I, prov I have two that you can use down there during Tech Hub hours. Um, that's all I have for you. I'm sorry that's a 17 minute video. I'm just a verbose person. But I hope you enjoy Module 1. I hope that you feel uh, like you have a good foundation. I hope that you uh, fall in love with wikis. I'm, I'm in love with wikis, so I, I hope that you too can find some, some pleasure in working with these fabulous, just easy to use, easy to edit websites. All right. Let me